We are joined now by Dr. Tony Watts, the president of the European Biophysical Societies Association, and he's here to talk about this week's Brexit Symposium. It is really great to have you here with us. Thank you for inviting me. So a lot of people are worried. There's so much up in the air when it comes to Brexit. I mean, you've got that deadline looming yes. at the end of this month. There's talk about an extension, and Theresa May, of course, is talking about not doing anything unless mm. Parliament agrees, which is easier said than done. Yes. So what do you want the attendees here to understand when it comes to Brexit? What do they need to know? Yes, well, any relationship, and this one is 40 years long, is difficult to end. There's always going to be repercussions, quite clearly there are. Um, but scientists have collaborated for centuries, long before the EU, long before mechanisms for networks were put in place, long before collaborative science is formally funded. So we will continue to do that, I'm sure, regardless of what happens with Brexit. Having said that, the interaction of the UK with the European Union has been fundamental in generating new science and also collaboration. So at the moment, around 50% of all publications of UK groups are with European groups as a direct result of European funding. So funding keeps people together, it's the cement. So we have to worry about that. Uh, I think attendees need to know that immigration and migration in academic jobs needs to be made easier. We have an archaic immigration system in Britain. It can take months to get someone into a laboratory. With Europe, it's been easier. Once we leave, it's going to be tougher again. Recruitment is a major problem. Undergraduates, postgraduates, faculty positions. People don't want to come to Britain. They may be excluded from European funding mechanisms. And so all of that is going to contribute to a hiatus and already after two years of negotiations, we have serious problems. So when you're speaking with your peers, what do you all talk about? How do you prepare for this? Is there anything you can do at this point or do you have to just sit and wait? Well, we have to sit and wait to see the outcome in 26 days time or whenever it's going to be. There may be a delay, but I'm not going to predict one way or the other way. We all have our views and it may be that a second referendum would come up. But I don't think we can prepare for it in a practical sense just to keep moving forward with what we have in place at the moment. Where there are already difficulties for us is that we don't have people applying for undergraduate courses in quite the numbers that we used to. PhD applications have declined this year for the first time ever from Europe in living history. And we need to think about faculty recruitments and researchers, postdocs coming into our labs. In fact, many people have been advised to appoint before the 29th of March and get all those appointments in place before the final outcome, which is quite interesting and practically quite difficult to do sometimes. But that's the only way we can, can, can really uh, prepare. You mentioned uh, research funding yes. being impacted. Talk to me a little bit more about that. So there are various ways in which it's impacted. Already, as a result of the negotiations and the announcement, the value of the pound has been significantly devalued against the US dollar, the euro, the yen. So when we buy equipment from abroad, it's 25% more expensive, instantly. Consumables have gone down. So a grant that's already in place, you have no extra leverage or no extra flexibility to recover that difference in the currency fluctuation. That's happened once before, um, but it's really difficult to deal with and nobody can compensate for that. And research budgets are set. We contribute to major facilities through intergovernmental grants. They are a fixed amount, but now, of course, if you're paying in euros, it's 25% more expensive. And for a flat capped top slice budget in this way, there's less money for other grants and other ways of funding science. So already, after these two years, the funding has been impacted. And the second way, of course, is applications to European funding. I have a number of examples of coordinators of grants who've been asked to step down so they should no longer be coordinators because this may well um, inhibit the chance of funding when it's led by a British group. Britain is the most successful country for attracting EU funding. The, st the statistics say that very clearly. And so many people like to come to England because they like to use the kind of backup and support and ideas to, to, to apply for European funding. Young investigators can apply for grants to Europe but not now if they come from Europe, if Brexit is a hard Brexit. So we have some real fundamental issues about how we can address and access 
European funding once we leave um, Europe, if it goes in a hard Brexit. And the government has not put in place anything so far to mitigate those difficulties. So, Dr. Watts, you mentioned the possibility of a second referendum. That's been talked about. Talk to me a little bit about the ramifications if that does come to pass. Well, it depends what the question will be. And, of course, a referendum normally means a black or white yes or no question. And it depends whether that is going to be a, a, a more or less a rerun of the uh, 2016 referendum question or whether it's going to be a different question, do we vote for a plan or no plan? Do we vote for a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit? So it really depends on what the question will be. And we don't know that yet, and we have politicians who have different ideas on that. So this is very much up in the air, I'm afraid. Whether we do have, if we have a referendum which essentially puts us back in the EU, I think a lot of European politicians, a lot of British politicians in particular, and I think many scientists would be quite happy to just go back to where we were before but you can never predict, and I don't like to predict these outcomes. They're so unpredictable. You are so right. Dr. Watts, thank you so much for joining us. It was a real pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for watching. And if you want to watch more from the Biophysical Society meeting, check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe.